Hello there and welcome. I'm Ole Brugger and if you're new here, I really hope I'll earn your subscription today. Yeah, I got a new 3D printer and I'm very excited about it. So why don't we just get started unboxing this one? I pre-ordered this printer back in April directly from Elegoo and I paid it for my own money, so this video is not sponsored or anything. And as you might can hear, this is a voiceover. My microphone was acting up, my GoPro in this video was acting up, and two of my other cameras was also acting up, so there will maybe be some funky clips in this video. But let's see how it goes. First, I must say the packaging of this printer is insanely good. I don't think I've ever unboxed anything that was so well packaged. In this box, we have the drip tray. This is something that is new for this printer and we will get back to this later and why it is necessary. And then we have a tiny box with a power cord. This is for the EU standard, but as you can see here, they supply all over the world. And then we actually only need to unbox the printer itself. And again, this packaging is insanely good. And then we have the user manual. I'm usually not the type that reads manuals. I use them as a go-to if something goes wrong. I like to figure things out myself. And sometimes it goes good. Quite often it goes good, but not always. So it's nice to have. Let's get this printer out of the box and OMG this is heavy and very unhandy but I managed to do it and getting all the plastic off and even inside the printer is full of foam. I bet I can find an accessory box and a build plate in here as well. Wow. This printer here is just so huge. It feels larger, but compared to my old printer, it's actually only a bit taller and a slightly wider. I think we will start to have a look around the printer itself. On the right side of the printer, we have the connector for the Wi-Fi antenna. And then we have a USB input, a power switch and a connection for the power itself. And here on the back of the printer, we have an extraction port where you can connect a fan or some air purifying devices. On the left side, we have a vent, which is filtered so it won't absorb dust and other nasty thing from my workshop. It actually has a pretty nice design. And if you go to the front, we just open the lid instead of removing it as on the old printer. This is actually a pretty nice feature. You don't have to store the lid away. And here we have the tank. It is held in place with two screws, one in each side. And here is the AI camera. This is for failure detection and real-time monitoring of the printing status. The AI camera can detect empty build plate and model warps. Let's remove the tank screws and the tank so we can remove the protective film on the FEP and the LCD display. Install the tank, fasten the screws, remove the protective film on the build plate and attach the build plate with the new latch system. Let's see what's inside the accessory box. Some gloves, it's very important to use gloves working with the resin. Some tools and some backup screws. A spatula, I actually need a new spatula. And then we have the power supply. This is an important thing if you want this printer to work. It delivers 24 volts, 6 amps and it is 144 watts. Some resin filters if you want to empty the tank back into the resin bottle. Some face masks. And I really don't know if this is necessary. I don't think these will help you much. If you really want to do something to be extra cautious, use a respirator instead. And then we have a gift certificate for a trial period of 90 days for the Shito Box Pro. A plastic spatula, only use this on the FEP film to get the last resin out of the tank. And then we have the Wi-Fi antenna. I will need to attach this. And finally, the USB stick. 
I guess there's some c 2 box software and some samples you can print on this. Okay, let's plug this in and power it on. And then my camera acted up. Sorry about that, but this footage is recorded after I have printed all my miniatures. But the boot sequence is still the same. This footage is run in real time, so you can get an idea of how long time it takes to run the boot sequence. After it's booted up, it will run a self-test. And this will increase the boot time on this printer compared to the old printers. And this is definitely not a bad thing, but you have to wait a bit longer. And it is ready. Up here you can see it has a temperature. And over here we have an indicator for Wi-Fi. We have a print menu where you can choose where to print from. Then we have a toolbox. You can adjust the printer manual, exposure times, clean the tank, and there's an emergency stop. Then we have the settings. We can choose language, app settings. There's sound, you can format your disk and restore factory defaults and so on. We also have print mode, you can choose high or low speed. And finally, you can choose which Wi-Fi you will connect to. And this is pretty much it. I think it is time to start printing some stuff. I went into C2Box and prepared a model. This is the same model as I used back when I got my old Saturn S. I set up two prints one for each printer and I use the highest possible resolution and lowest layer height, which is 0.025 millimeters. I sliced up both models for each printer and the time it estimated the print would take was almost twice as high on my old printer. But let's get back to that and start printing. I powered on both printers at the exact same time and here you can see the difference in boot times. Saturn S, done and ready. And the Saturn IV Ultra haven't even started its self-test yet. And now we're ready. And the boot time for the new Saturn IV Ultra is 55 seconds. I used the same resin in both printers. I opened a new bottle and shared it between the two printers. It is the Elegoo Standard Grey resin and it's been working quite well for me. And one thing I actually forgot. I forgot to install the drip tray when I was pouring up this resin. It should have looked something like this. And it is very important so you won't get resin into this gap where it actually can destroy the printer itself. I'm printing from USB stick on both printers and I started them at the exact same time. And again, the Saturn IV Ultra is a bit slower to get started because it's doing some self-testing. But this is maybe a good thing because it is testing the print itself to make sure that you will have a successful print. A cool thing here is that you can actually see what you're printing directly on the display. And here you can see the new pivot function, which makes this printer unique. And the reason why they do it is to increase the speed and make an easier wear on the FEP film. This makes it a lot easier for the printer to release the print from the FEP film. And here you can see this print will take 3 hours and 28 minutes. I know that is a long time, but I also boosted all the settings on this print. On the Saturn S, it is 6 hours and 18 minutes. So the Saturn IV Ultra is almost twice as fast. And with some more tweaks, it can be even faster. Now we just have to wait some hours to get the final result.
If you install the Sheet Tool Manager, you can monitor your prints from your own computer and you can watch live feed video from the AI cam. It also supports time-lapse recording. And now the Saturn Ultra is done. And you can see here Saturn S still needs 3 hours and 10 minutes. And again, I forgot the drip tray. But uh, let's have a look at this print and put it in the cleaning tank. And now to my biggest issue. Eligu is selling these wash stations along as a bundle with the printer. I had mine in advance, but it is still the same problem. The build plate is too big to fit in the tank. I don't know what they were thinking about. Maybe I can just fill up the tank with more isopropyl alcohol and then I couldn't put on the lid. Or, like I did here, put it in, in an angle, but that is also a problem if I have bigger prints on the plate. And putting it into an angle would also give me other problems, but we will get back to that later. Recently I got a second wash station, and this is with clean isopropyl alcohol, so I have a dirty station and a more clean station. This will make sure that my print will be nice and clean. I will use the middle spatula that came with the printer to release the miniature into some hot water. This will make it a lot easier to release the support material. And now the Saturn S is done with its print. I will run it through the same procedure as I did on the Saturn IV Ultra. And here you can see the build plate fits perfectly into the wash station. And here you can see the build plate and my wash station from their new printer. And if I put it in an angle, the isopropyl alcohol will gather up inside the top part of the build plate, which is hollow. So in future prints, I think I'll just have to put it directly down like this and just fill up the tank some more. I've glued both models on their bases and now I will cure them for three minutes in the cure station. And here's the result from both prints. And as you can see, the Saturn IV Ultra has a lot more details. I will put some grey primer on both miniatures and let it dry and see if it will make the details even more visible. And I think the result speaks for itself. You can clearly see a difference in details. And to make the details even more visible, I will give it a dark wash. I think I overdid the wash on the Saturn IV Ultra model a bit too much, but you can still see that the details are still a lot more visible. I'm very excited about this printer. I really like all the new features it has compared to my old Saturn S. And as you can see here, I've already printed some more. And this time I will remember my tray. This is actually the only issue I have with this printer, is that enlarged print bed. I really hope Eligu will find a solution for this in the future and not just release another new product that you have to buy to use this printer as it is intended to. This is it for now. I am very happy about my investment of this printer. I think it is fully worth it and now I can print some more things for my pile of shame and other projects in the near future. If you think I've earned it, please subscribe, hit the like button, make a comment below what you think about this new printer, and I will see you soon in the near future, probably next week. Goodbye for now.